good morning. It looks like we're going to be a small little group today, but that's okay. Some familiar faces. Um, for those that were here yesterday, what did you think about that training class yesterday? Was that awesome? It was amazing. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I, I keep saying it was, uh, even today, thinking about it. By far the best, hands down, no exceptions, uh, selling skills in real estate class, listing class that I've been to. Um, so we were very fortunate to get her and wow, wow, wow. So it was great. Um, but today we're gonna talk a little bit more about, uh, about working listings and mainly working expired and somewhat the same techniques can be applied towards FISBOs. It's a different type of discussion but the same mechanics work. Uh, and I've asked Keith to join us this week because Keith is someone who is a producer who religiously uh, sets in time blocks and does what he needs to do to make money and make the calls. So every day he's here, he's dressed for success. He's wearing a shirt and tie. Uh, he's in his office. He gets going and he starts dialing and you know, he's constantly learning. He's taking classes to learn, doing research. He knows his market. So he is literally doing everything that you should be doing for your business. Uh, and it's so great to hear his excitement. Like this morning, he comes in, he goes, wow, Kong expires. And I've got a new $600,000 uh, home that I'm going to be, you know, giving a listing packet to. So the person wants to talk to him. $600,000. Wow. You know, that's awesome. So Keith, do me a favor, kind of talk me through your mindset. How do you set your week up? How do you set your day up to be able to make sure you have that time to call? Well, uh, time blocking is, is a big part of it and uh, making a commitment. Uh, lead generating, I, I do that in the mornings. Uh, I try to be on the phones by 8.30. Uh, I want to lead generate um, at, at least five hours a day. I'm on the phones. I try to be on the phone, so I'll do three or four in the morning and then maybe one in the afternoon, or maybe one or two in the afternoon. Uh, but I try to get about five hours a day on the phones. And so how, what's that translating to you? Obviously you use some technology to help you, so you're not sitting there dialing. Um, what technology are you using and how are you managing that process? Yeah, Mojo, uh, I, I, I strongly recommend a dialer if you're going to do this because it, the ease of uh, being able to um, dial it leaves a pre-recorded voicemail that you record it will leave the voicemail for you while you're calling the next person and you're able to um, call hundreds of numbers uh, very very quickly uh, rather than doing it manually i mean it could be done manually but I, I think the investment for the dialer is worth it and the data that comes in from mojo uh, is somewhat accurate and what i like about the expired data uh, like if i go look tomorrow and it moved to active Mojo will change it from expired to active. So I'm not calling active listings. I'm only calling expires. Okay. And how many dials an hour are you able to do? Oh, goodness. Um, on a good day, over, over 100. Uh, I'd say 100 and probably about 100 an hour, roughly. Depends on the conversations. Depends on how many people pick up. But if it's just dialing, uh, my numbers are going to be a little different than everybody else's. I usually takes me about 10 dials to get one contact and about 20 contacts to get one good lead out of that. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a numbers game. So, you know, your numbers, you know how to work backwards to from your dials to how many contacts and how many contacts to get to that actual conversation. That's going to be meaningful. Right. And that's although, important. Although this morning I had my third contact, I was able to have that 600,000 dollars listing that, uh, that wants to meet with me right we work at the, we look at the law of averages though over the right. course of time right? Right. right so so what else are you doing obviously anybody can pick up the phone and dial um or they can get a dialer and have the dialer do it for them during that time while you're waiting for a call to pick up right because there's a lot of downtime when using a dialer where you're just watching that system tick through the calls are you just sitting there twilling your thumbs or are you doing other things uh, well, I'm actually doing other things. Um, with the expireds, I, I usually try to, because a lot of them don't answer. So I'm usually, make, I, I write them letters. Um, so I'll, I'll send out letters to, to expireds as well. So I'm getting the letters kind of prepared. Uh, with the circle prospecting, you got a little more downtime. I usually read. Uh, I'll read a book um, that I'm, a business building book or something like that. So it's not just sitting there looking at the computer. I'll, I'll try to multitask to a certain extent. 
right? Use that time wisely in the downtime. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you, you send things out to these expires. What, what are you sending them out? Is it a birthday card? Is it a, uh, you know, a Trump for president campaign sticker? What are you doing? That would, that might be a good idea, but, uh, it's actually a letter. I've, I've got a letter written up as, um, I actually take a photo uh, of their house and put it on the letterhead. So it's kind of, they can, they can kind of, um, see that their house is on the, on the photo, so to speak, but it's a letter addressed to them, written to them. It talks about, I'm so sorry your house didn't sell. And it kind of talks a little bit about what I do differently to get the house sold. I send them my resume. I send them my market packeting. Um, it, it is a little bit expensive to do it, but I think it's worth it. It's worth, it. I mean, the $600,000 listing, that's $18,000 because he listed it for 3%. I mean, he's paying 3% to the buyer and to the seller. So that's $18,000. It's worth it. 18, if you single side it. If you single side it. If you double side it, how much? 36. <laughs> $36,000 if you double side it. Yeah, you, you so it, it. It's worth it to send out a couple letters, that, you know? That's, that's Ian money right there. Yeah, now you're competing with Ian and Antonio <laughs> and their big checks, huh? So, all right. Well, what? so in your resume, what are some of the things I've, you're highlighting for that customer? Uh, you know, my, my production, you know, the fact that I've sold houses that I am producing uh, a little about, about me. I have a marketing plan. I think it's a 69, which is an odd number, but 69 point marketing plan uh, that I, that I do. And I kind of lay out all that kind of explain that I take professional photos. I offer a uh, pre-listing inspection if, if necessary. I have an inspector that will do it at a discount and he doesn't get paid until it closes. So if the deal falls through, he doesn't expect any money from me. I'm sure he would do that for any agent if you want their information. Um, so little things like that. Okay. Things that, I, I try to think of things of, of why things expired. Like, like oddly enough, this six hundred thousand dollar listing, there was one photo on the MLS, one, and it looked like it was taken from a driveway. And it's a beautiful home. It, 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 the, the remarks talk about how beautiful it is. One photo. Yeah, it talks about how beautiful the floors and the built-ins are and all that good fun stuff. And it looks like a, the quality of photo from the property appraiser website. It, it, it does. So it may even be the property appraiser website's photo. Who knows? I haven't checked. Uh, we haven't checked that yet. So yeah, so that's setting up for success. You're able to you know, find out why it didn't sell and, and try to go after that perspective. So in that case, did the house look like it was priced properly? It did. I mean, it, it, there was one down the street a little bit bigger for 700, one down the street a little bit bigger for a 1.3. So it, it's, it's probably in that ballpark. Um, it, it does look like it's uh, priced right. Okay. I, I would even be off. I would be even be willing to get an appraisal um, out of my pocket just to, that way we have a little peace of mind. If right. They do the list with me. So one other question, when you got started doing this in the very beginning before you had production, um, cause I know you've done this since the very beginning of your career. What did you include in that resume? I mean, if a lot of our agents don't have those prior sales, that prior production that you have. So what would you recommend to those agents to include in that packet? Uh, I was with a different company. Um, and that company had some pretty good numbers, very similar, if not, uh, not quite as good as century 21. So I would use the company, the century 21's numbers, you know, our right. list, the uh, sell ratio, our, um, you know, the volume of, of properties that we, you know, we've sold from coast to coast. I, I would just use the word we a lot. Um, our company, my company, our team, we uh, use, our, use our company's production. Right. And, and for those that have seen on, on Workplace, we do have a kind of pre-listing uh, info packet that we're putting together. Uh, one of the pages, we literally took and did calendar icons out for the 62 days of average on market versus R8, so it's a visual representation. We're going to include the global reach map. We're going to include our coast to coast icon map. So a lot of that information so that the consumer can see that you're part of a team collectively that has sold a lot of houses over the past couple of years and from the Sun Coast all the way to the Space Coast and everywhere in between. So absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll add to what Keith said that when I first got started, you know, I never was questioned you know, how long I've been the business. I just, my name is Kevin and I'm with Century 21. And right there, that power of saying the name Century 21, the most recognized name in real estate, usually will overcome everything as long as you are confident and you are leveraging the office's stats and your team stats, leveraging the fact that you have marketing support, you have transaction support, you have all these tools that are there 
because you know as a brokerage we want you to focus on what you do best which is selling the house not pushing paperwork so that's why we offer that transaction management help included with all of our transactions now so what, what other advice key i mean how is your approach what do you when you're getting these people on the phone are you just uh saying hi your house didn't sell your realtor suck you should use me no no, 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 no. Actually, I have a script. Um, I, 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 I use the same script all the time. I practice my script. I practice my script when I'm driving in. Um, I try to get my mindset right. To where I, It's funny. I, I've been working expires now really, really hard and aggressively for a couple of weeks. I have not been yelled at at one time by the people that answer, even the people who answer that aren't attached to the property. Totally a wrong number. They've been getting calls. Um, a lot of it's just mindset. It's, I, I try to use a script that's non-threatening. I, I, my, my opening line is, this is Keith with Century 21. I'm probably not the first agent to call you today, am I? And I even chuckle when I say it. And nine times out of 10, they're like, no, no, you're not. And that just kind of breaks the ice right there. But like Kevin said, I, 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 it, it's all about uh, mindset and confidence. I've never one time been asked how many houses I've sold because I don't give them a reason to ask that question because I'm confident, I know the market, I know what I'm talking about, and no one ever, even when I was new, I, I was always told to, to act like you're a professional because once you pass that test, you're a professional. And, and uh, I, I took that to heart. So it, hey, one it, thing, go ahead. So one thing I always try to come back to, and it is literally taught in 63 hour, day one, I think it's slide one or maybe slide two. Uh, you know, what are we in the business of? We are not in the business of selling homes, right? It's not you selling the house. You're not, you're not selling your property. Well, Ian may be a different story. But in most cases, it's not us selling the house, right? It's we are representing someone. So what are we marketing? What are we selling? And that is our expertise, not our past sales. It's our expertise. You can acquire expertise through practice in real estate. You can acquire it through studying. Or you can acquire it through being, as you know, Ka, um, uh, Kim Dickey said yesterday, through your commitment to research and commitment to that, knowing your numbers. What is their average interest rate? What does the difference of a quarter point increase mean? What, you know, buyer's market, seller's market, where are we going? Don't speculate. Don't put your opinion, you know, into it with political uh, slants, but look at the facts, right? We're in a strong market. Yes, we might see some price increase uh, slow down. We're not looking at any type of a decrease except in the luxury space, the 750 and up. But in the mainstream of the market, we're going to see a in our area maybe a slowdown on that year-over-year -year growth. Knowing those numbers, right? Knowing what our average days on market are, knowing what our list price sell price ratio is, that compared to the market, that's where you win. That's where you score because then they see how smart you are and how much how you are in command of the facts. They're not going to ask you how many houses have you sold. It doesn't matter, right? They that's what Century Twenty One is there for. That's going to support you there. So good points. Um, Keith, I know you also do some circle prospecting. So a lot of people don't know that term, if, especially because I say more a, everybody else calls it geographic farming. You know, old red agents call it circle prospecting because they had to be different. So talk about what that is, why you do it, how do you approach it, and how has it worked for you? Yeah, I, I, you know, generally the expired, you, you'll get six or seven a day. Although yesterday, the first of the month, there were 60, 60 expired. It took me a few hours to call all of them. I uh, got two really good uh, meetings um, out of those uh, 60 calls. So when I'm done with my expires, like today, there were seven. So when I'm done with my expires, I will call just listed, just solds. You just go to MLS, you find a home that sold within 30 days, you call up the neighborhood around it. You know, basically the script is we sold a home uh, in your area, uh, we showed it within 30 days. I'm just calling to see if you're thinking about selling your home this year. And I've gotten listings from doing that. Uh, what I like about circle prospecting is there's really no competition. Um, unlike the expires that are being called by a few agents, no one's calling those neighborhoods, um, generally, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's a little yeah. easier of a conversation. So what are you saying to them when you, they answer the phone? Uh, this is, my name is Keith for Century 21. There was a house that sold in your neighborhood. I was just calling to see if you may be thinking about selling your house this year. That's my script. Yep. And it's very binary. Yes, no. I've also heard you say along the lines of it, the house sold in your neighborhood. Uh, we There's a lot of buyers that were lined up to place offers. Unfortunately, they didn't get a chance to put one in on this or didn't get accepted. Right. 
you know, what would you be considering? Mm -hmm. So you're creating that sense of urgency to them. If they are mm -hmm. considering selling, hey, there are buyers in the pipe where they're pinned up, ready to buy. So this might be the perfect time for you to sell, right? Mm -hmm. And then be able to back that up with data, as Kim said yesterday. Yep. So what other tips? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Now, what other tips would you have for, you know, as I look at those who are on here, we have a couple of new agents, some part-time agents. What tips would you give these folks to getting started? Like, um, to actually just getting, stepping off the ledge, if you will, and just doing it? Uh, treat it like a job. I mean, uh, if you, like your famous saying, you work part-time hours, you're going to get part-time pay. I, although I think if you work part-time hours in real estate, you're, you're not going to get any pay. Uh, generally speaking. So you have to treat it like a job. I, I would probably write down every 30 minutes, stop and write down what you did that last half hour. And it, it, my wife told me to do that uh, a year ago and it was eye opening of what I wasn't doing. So every 30 minutes I would stop and write down what I did that last half hour. You do that all day long, you, you're going to see what you're doing or what you're not doing. And um, one thing I like about phones, because I used to door knock, I, I'm, a, I'm an old school, I'm an old man, I, I do things the hard way. But I one thing I like about the phones is even if you get someone who's rude, they're not going to recognize you in public. They're, they're not going to know you. <laughs> and my theory is I don't want to work with mean people. So if you're going to be a jerk to me on the phone, I'm glad I found that out because I don't want to get in a relationship with you. So I'm okay with getting yelled at. You just have to have thick skin and treat it like a job. You know, something that Kim said yesterday that really stuck with me is like, I can't pay my bills with fear. Mm. Right. Right. I mean, that was that was like whoa! I can come home at the end of the day and tell my family I'm sorry we can't have dinner tonight uh, because all I all I had was fear and not not results. Right? I I just thought that was eye opening uh, from her, like just the way she worded it. So I, I my my adage is you can make excuses, or you can make money, but you can't pay. But you can't do both, and excuses right. don't pay the bills. Right. Right. So a lot of it is that that fear, and when she when she talked about that for those that weren't here was that fear of failure. You know, we, as kids, we have no fear. We're born fearless, right? We are taught to be afraid of things where, you know, we would go touch that hot pan. We will stick something in electrical sockets, right? We have no fear. That fear is something that's developed. And that fear, that, 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 that fear of our vanity, that you're going to fail, that you're going to look, you know, stupid is, is, is you know, it, it, it paralyzes people. You get stuck in analysis paralysis. Don't worry about it. Go out there and fail. If you're not failing every single day, then you're not succeeding because success comes after failure. So you have to fail in order to get to success, right? Or the destination success, you get there by failure boulevard. I don't care how you want to twist, that's, it's got to come. So get off, the, get off your ass and just do it, right? Mm -hmm. Do what Nike says. Just freaking do it. Um, I get so frustrated when I hear people like, oh, I want this to be perfect and that to be perfect and this to be perfect. No, just do it, right? Stop making the excuses. Um, Keith got me to read a book. It's called, the, I think it's the book of yes, the, or the, the, what is it called, Keith? I just, I'm blanking. Go for no. Go uh, for no, right? Yeah. The destination. And, and there's a book know. of yes as, as well by Kevin Ward. There's two. The book of yes yeah. and then go for no's. Yeah, so the book of yes is the one I was talking about, right? And he talks about you to get to yes, you have to have a lot of no's, right? right? And you're going to fail. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care. I, every day, there is something I don't know. I come across a situation I don't know. I leverage my resources and tools in order to find that knowledge that you have as well. So there are going to be times when your answer to a customer is, that's a great question. I don't have the answer, but I commit to you. I'm going to get it and circle back with you. How is tomorrow at the same time for me to call you? Or how is in two hours for me to call you back, right? They're going to respect you more because you're not BSing them. You're actually admitting you don't know, which is okay. We are all human as is the seller or the buyer. And we're going to get that knowledge and come back to them. And now you've grown, which is awesome. Another, another tip I got from a coach was uh, go cause a problem. Um, a lot of agents are like, well, I, I'm not prepared to list this house. I'm not prepared. Go out, if you find someone who's willing to list their house with you, come back to the office and we'll walk you through the steps. You know, don't think that you have to have it all down pal. So go out and cause problems and then come back for the solution. And that, that kind of resonated with me. Um, yes, I would love for you to have a problem for me to solve. 
mm -hmm. right? That makes for, for John to solve or for one of your peers to help you with. We are one big family. Go out there and, you know, if you're not calling me with problems, you're not trying. And I'll tell you what, the ones that are selling the most, that the producers are the ones that have challenges with their deals and have problems, right? They have issues. I'm going to, I'm going to call out someone right now and I will unmute that person. Uh, so he just knows who it was. Uh, but Ian has a sale right now, a listing under contract. And yeah, well, the appraisal came back significantly lower. That's a huge problem. It has gave us the opportunity to sit down and look at the appraisal. He got a chance to really dive into that appraisal. We did as well to evaluate comps. That's a problem. That's a challenge. We still don't have a solution yet, but yeah, that's a problem. Uh oh, we do. Yeah, we did, did we? Uh, did we overcome our hurdle? We overcome the hurdle. We've accepted the appraised value. Woo! All right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that in more detail later. <laughs> so, so lunch is on Ian this week. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I guess there's yeah. some cheese cheese on the menu. I, I, I learned yesterday. Uh, oh, cheese, you go with the wine. No, oh, like no, no, not that. It's a different kind of cheese. Oh, right? okay. I, I learned a new a new English term. <laughs> it cheesed off. Oh, so that's a new thing. Uh, so I mean, there's a great example of of, of an issue, right? Um, who else? Raise your hand if you recently had a sale that had an issue. Joel, yours, yours had a couple of challenges, did it or no? I'm trying to remember. Um, we the house had the polybutylene uh, the yep. piping. Yep. So we weren't so, sure about that. And how to handle that, right? Those are things that are come up. Do you have? Does the house have polybutylene? Does the house have aluminum wiring? Does it have a Federal Pacific panel, right? Though, as those things come up, how to handle them? They're, they can be handled in multiple different ways. Uh, go find the problems. Go find it. You know, get a customer on the phone and blow it and then come back. Kevin, I, I screwed the pooch on this one. They hung up on me, yelled at me. What could I have done differently? And let's work through that. So we're here for you. We're here to support you. If you don't sell and make money, we don't make money. So we're invested in you and your success, right? And then there's also personal ego and pride on my part when I talk to other Century 21 brokers and they have better per person productivity and better average sale prices. I want us to be the best, especially in Central Florida Broker Council. I don't want them to be better than us because we're the best, we know it, we just gotta get the numbers there. So we will, no problem there. So Keith, what are, what are the thoughts, advice do you have for a new agent besides getting off their butts and just doing it? I think that's a lot of it, you know, just, just finding a form of lead generation, which you, you have to actively lead generate. I, I think at least three hours a day, you should actively be lead generating, not I mean, not, nothing against blogging, nothing against Facebook. That's important. That's passive, but you have to actively be lead generating at least three hours a day. Just find find a method that works for you. I, I like calling. If you're not someone that like calling, maybe you can do open houses. You can do open houses for other agents. You can do open houses for other listings. You know, check with Kevin. Make sure you know you're not you're not violating any rules. But you can do open houses for other people uh, to generate listings or generate le leads as well. But just find something that works for you and do it commit to it I, I would start early in the morning because if you put it off it, it won't get done so that's why I, i'm on the phones by 8 30 that's my goal is to be on the phones by 8 30 that way if something comes up i have a, a customer that just called me and said that she wants to see a house today i said two o'clock because I, I i'm not going to stop what i'm doing to go show you a house so everything is going to be scheduled in the afternoon so just just find a method to lead generate and, and do it commit to it at least three hours a day uh, get an accountability partner, uh, someone who's going to hold you accountable. Um, and and that, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, so, something. yeah it's so important to counter block. And it, like Keith said, he had someone look at a house, wants to look at a house today. He has his time blocked to go out and do showings or other activities outside the office. And that's when where he's going to make that appointment. He doesn't stop his productivity this morning, what he's doing to go do that. He does it when he has in the schedule. You don't want to also appear desperate to the customer. Oh, right now. I mean, anyone that can drop everything they're doing to go help you right now see a house, that's, that screens desperation, right? You're, you're, you're letting the buyer drive and be in control at that point, or the seller be in control. On a, on a side note, if that $600,000 listing said come list, I, I would have probably dropped what I was doing. <laughs> 600000 yeah. Maybe. Um, maybe. Uh, but not a best practice, right? You know, no, you not a good practice. To, to, I mean, how many times have you met with a buyer and they... They, they didn't buy. I mean, you're, you're, yep. you're, you're, it's kind of like Kim said, you want to be in control. 
you're in control. Exactly. And she just yeah. texts me back and two o'clock works fine. So no harm done. Right. So and another thing, like you said, there's active prospecting, there's passive pro prospecting. Active prospecting methods are door knocking, phone calls, holding open houses, right? Those type of things where you're active out there, face to face, ear to ear, mouth, whatever, you're, you're actually talking to that person. More passive prospecting. What I love about passive prospecting is you can do that when you're not able to do your active, right? So in the evening hours or in the early morning hours, when you can't call or door knock, you can work on your passive prospecting things like social posts, planning out your posts for the next couple of weeks, right? You take an hour or two a week, time block it to write a blog or two and then schedule your post around those for the next two weeks. You've got it covered, right? So the rule is an hour or so of passive planning to set up your social media passive prospecting for a week. So four hours a month to do an entire month of passive prospecting is all you need, right? And that's not, it's a half a day. And now you have stuff that's out there that's constantly prospecting for you on your behalf, out there adding to your credibility, right? And it makes sure one of the key things is that you're using evergreen content when you're doing that. Don't post something that is about Halloween. Post stuff that is good year round, all the time. And then as you build your database, then you can start working on more seasonal stuff. But in the beginning, you want evergreen content that's good no matter the time of year, it's good today, it's good five years from now. The same type of content, it's great stuff. Um, one of the other things I wanted to address uh, more as a broader topic, it keeps coming up, is the issue, I, I, I had a couple agents, had another one this morning ask me about it, the iBuyers, right? We have a lot of Purple Bricks, Open Door, Zillow, lots of people out there that are selling their homes directly to a to a company and the company is listing those back out. Now, is that a threat? Show of hands, if that, is that a problem? You think that's going to be a disruptor to you and your business? Just show of hands if you think that's true. So no one here sees that as a problem. Okay, well one does, only one does. Okay, I would agree with the majority, right? It's not a problem, right? Here's the issue, you gotta understand the model. If someone is willing to sell to Open Door, let's just say their home is worth 200. They are not selling it to Open Door for 200. They are selling it to Open Door for far less than 200. So if someone needs to sell their home fast now, no issue. Like, okay, fire sale it. You're going to lose money. And you're still paying a commission, by the way. They put a fee on top of that. So they're going to sell it to them for, for sure, a lower amount, and you're going to pay them a fee. So you're still paying the commission net net. They call it something different. Each one calls it a little different, something different, but they're still paying the commission, not saving the commission. And they're getting it for a lower price because open door has got to make a profit. The other thing is for open door or purple bricks or any of them, it has to fit onto a spreadsheet. And if you go back to um, our open house call a couple weeks ago, rewatch it's on Twitter. I mean, on uh, YouTube with Nick Bailey. He talks about that, right? It's got to fit into a perfect box for it to work. That neighborhood has to be a very consistent neighborhood as far as home types. So I can't have lots of variety into it. And it has to be able to, if we can get it for this, then we can resell it at this margin and it works. Remember, these are accountants and financial analysts that are determining what homes they're willing to buy and what price they're willing to pay. It's not a human, like with, it, it goes into a a program that spits it back out. So the other thing, if you were here yesterday, Kim Dickey talked a lot about in the absence of value, we go for price, right? So there's lot, not a lot of value. Their value is we'll buy it now, that's it, you're done. So that where you're gonna sacrifice price there. What is going on on Troy's camera? We have a weird view of Troy right now. Okay, um, so, for us, right, we have a lot of value and that value adds money, right? So it's just being able to make sure you can articulate your value proposition. Um, the good news is if you're part of the Zillow program with us, we'll get those Zillow leads. If they don't sell to Zillow, we're going to get those seller leads. Those are, that's a great source of seller leads for us. Uh, so we'll start to get those through, through our Zillow program. Um, but it, it's, don't worry about it. If you have challenges, let me know you're typically not going to go up against them on a listing presentation. And if you do, just be able to articulate, how, tell them, get, get an offer. I think I can sell your house for this. Here's the range. Here's the CMA. Go get an offer for them. Don't be scared about it. 
right? And it's also knowing what their time frame. If they need to sell it today, you're not the agent for them anyway, right? Because you're not going to be able to get them the likelihood of you having a cash buyer in your pocket that in the next two days can get them on a short close of seven days or whatever is slim. That's what they're doing at Open Door, Purple Bricks and all those, right? You're, that's not your market. You want the person that wants to get the best possible price for their home in the shortest possible time frame. That's not what Open Door, Purple Bricks offers. Does that make sense to everyone? Anyone have questions on that? No? Cool. All right, well, Keith, thank you for chiming in. Does anyone have, you know, un unmute yourself if you have questions. Um, anyone have any questions for Keith, myself, or, or anything else that you want to talk about? Going once. Going twice. Sold. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you for being part of our call. This is our shortest one, but I think lots of great information. Uh, don't forget, Momentum Huddle is tomorrow. We'll share the results from our survey, and we'll also talk about some selling skills techniques and stuff to help you get more listings and overcome objections. So see you then. Until then, have a great afternoon and a great night. Bye now.